All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about ways to speed up measures that use the if or switch functions. Uh, I've been helping a bunch of people out, optimize reports and DAX and models, and I've been seeing this one come up and, and not enough people know about the if eager function. So I wanted to make a video um, to hopefully help others as well. So I'm gonna go through a demo of, of each of these bullets here, but these are the main takeaways, right? If you're doing ifs and switches, try to leverage variables as much as you can. Um, if you're trying to optimize and you know it's an if measure that's slowing you down, just sub in if.eager. It's real quick and easy to do. A lot of times it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's super easy to try. So just go ahead and try it. Um, also with like switch, uh, I before field parameters came around, this was a very common pattern to use a disconnected table to populate a slicer to choose which measures would be displayed in a visual. Um, if you can leverage field parameters, and it's not possible in all scenarios, but leverage them, they can be much more performant. We'll talk about that. Uh, but if you can't leverage them, instead of using a switch measure, uh, and if, if you find out that a switch measure is slow, uh, go ahead and try to do nested if eagers. There isn't a switch.eager function. Um, I keep asking for it, uh, but go ahead and use nested if.eagers. All right, so those are the main takeaways. Uh, so now let's jump into sort of demo of each of these points. All right, so here's a, a simple report page. And uh, this, is, this is our model here, real, real simple model, star schema. You can ignore this table we're not using in this video. Um, and uh, so we've got you know dimensions of product stores and date we've got like 12.6 million rows in the sales table so decent size but not big by any stretch um, and then we've got this disconnected table here uh, that we'll see later uh, which is used to populate a slicer to pick which measure is displayed and then there's this field parameter table uh, also shown to be more performant all right so here's our scenario we've got a visual and there are scenario is when a given store in a given week has more than 20,000 in sales, then we want to multiply that by 90%, right? Or 10% discount uh, to get our discounted sales. Okay. Uh, so now if we drill down on this visual, we'll see that it's broken down for each week. Um, and you probably wouldn't use all these, but just this is just here for demonstration. If we just did straight total sales, maybe this amount, the discounted sales is summing up the same uh, column. The numbers in here are crazy high, so everything's divided by a thousand to avoid distraction, and then multiplied by 0.9 to get the discounted sales. Um, but we don't always want to do that. It's only if they meet the condition. So we've got this discounted sales if, and that's where if the total sales is greater than 20,000, uh, then do the discounted sales measure, otherwise do total sales. Okay. Um, and then we've got the, the variables version of this, and this is definitely the way you should, you should write this one. And uh, in this simple case, this works, that we can just do the total sales, do that measure once, and then we can just use the variable multiple times here, and this is, this is much more performant. Um, the, the other scenario I want to show here, and we're going to go to DAX Studio in a minute, is if we look at this, if we if we roll it up, it has to be at the city and week level. So if we drill back up, you can see here that it looks like um, for for rolled up to Atlanta, which is lots of weeks, uh, it's applying the discount there, and we don't want that. So we actually need a little bit more advanced measure to get the correct answer over here, right? Um, and you see this number is a little different than that number. So if we go to the city week sum x. What we're doing here is we're doing a sum x over the summer uh, the summarize of the sales table for week and city and this help us helps us get the the right answer um, and then we're doing the discounted sales if uh, here and so that that's assessed at the row level so this makes a virtual table of year week and city and then for each one, it, it does the if, right? And so if you do this lots of times, and if your if measure isn't performant, you could be paying the price uh, multiple times there. I needed to do it when it was drilled down. So let me copy the query, go back to DAX Studio, replace this, and now we see we have the city and the year week column. I'll do the same cleanup. 
and then I'll format the query, debug comma so I can quickly comment measures in and out, and this is definitely how you should go about troubleshooting measures. Uh, so then we'll turn on server timings, and we can sort of demonstrate the problem with that uh, first version of if that I showed you where we're evaluating different measures in each of the if true false conditions. Right, so if we go ahead and comment out all but the simple total sales and run server timings, we run this. Uh, it's clear in the cache. We have clear on run on. And you can see it's it runs quickly, a single storage engine query uh, to get everything we need. And it returns, you know, basically the number of rows in the visual here. And that's something you want to look for here is to make sure this number matches uh, this number. This is an estimated row, so actually if we just run query plan, you can see what, what the storage engine query is really returning. This is artificially high. Um, so if we show the query plan here and run it, you can see this 1311, right? So this is the storage engine query here in bold, and it's returning 1311 rows, which is exactly what our visual is showing, and that's definitely what we want, okay? So now, uh, disconnected uh, would be the same, so we'll comment that one out. But if we run that if, um, and we uncomment that, you can see that uh, we're running multiple storage engine queries here. It takes longer, more compute. Your users would be slower to see their results. And you can see we've got uh, several times, three times here, where we're, we're running that same query uh, to get the data. Right, so, so definitely less efficient there. So the one fix I showed you would be to just use the variable version of that. And if we uncomment that, if you can do this approach, this is the simplest way to go. If we run this one where we're just doing the variable outside the if and then using it, you can see we run that more expensive query uh, just one time and things, things are much better, right? Uh, so that's good. Um, the other thing, I mentioned is to do uh, if eager. So if we go back to this one and we'll just run that again, I want to just show you how to quickly mo modify the measure to get better results. So now if we go to here and we're doing the discounted sales if measure, if I right click on it, do define measure. Sorry, that should have been at the top. I lost track of my cursor. And I put that up here. Okay, so we've defined the measure here, um, but all we have to do is change this to if dot eager. Okay, I don't have to make any other change. Super fast and easy to do. And now, if I run this again, you can see that it's much more performant, right? Like before, I'm only doing the the single expensive query, uh, and things are much better, right? So again, use variables if that solves it. Uh, if you have a more complex if, then you may need to use if.eager. It doesn't always work, but a lot of times it does, and it's super easy to try, okay? So that's if.eager. Now let's talk about switch. So like I said before, um, and you can see this visual is taking a while to refresh, so there's definitely a problem here. All right, so this is a um, little bit busier report page. And so it's, it's got a number of filters on it to reduce the amount of data. Um, and you see it took a while to show up here. And so basically, normally you would just have this switch measure in here and a reminder what that looks like, or I'll show you what that looks like. Right. And this is a measure that someone showed me. Uh, I typically wouldn't write it like this. Um, but you know they were they're, they're, they have this disconnected table called measure selector. There's a column in there with with these uh, values for which measure, and basically we've got uh, four different measures. We're switching between here total sales, but using the order date relationship, total sales, but using the ship date relationship, and same thing for total quantity. Either way, right? Um, and uh, so they go through this to see, hey, what's the current value? in the slicer uh, and then based on what that is inside the switch true uh, run run different measures so you know the results you you get here is uh, we're just looking at this last 
measure here. These are here just for comparison. If I do total uh, quantity order date, again, the measure's running slow. We're going to see why in a second. Um, this, this would update this value here. Okay, and again, before uh, field parameters, this was um, a very common technique people would use, right? And I'm not saying don't, avoid, don't use ifs and switches. They're super powerful and they can give you some great functionality in your report. Um, but there's something you need to watch out for. Okay. Um, so now what we can do, uh, just to show you, oh, I mentioned field parameters. So this is sort of the same report page, but, but with field parameters. And in this case, we've created this field parameter table, um, field parameter measure selector. It uh, auto-generates this table once you go through the, the wizard there to generate uh, field parameters. And field parameters are great because they give you some great functionality that I can, I can choose more than one measure here, and it just adds it to my visual. And if I were to capture the query behind this visual, it would just list these simpler measures. It, it, I don't need to write the complex switch and risk uh, poor performance there. So this is very performant um, and definitely uh, leverage field parameters uh, whenever you can in these scenarios. Sometimes you can't, you have more complex logic in your, in your switch. And that's why I wanna show you the nested if eager. All right, so we go back to this visual All right, so I'm back on the disconnected uh, table approach here. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this visual. We know that it's a little slow, which is why we're optimizing it. 10 seconds. All right, copy that query. Go back to Dex Studio. And that's looking better. We're going to clean it up. We'll put evaluate here. Then we'll format the query, debug commas. And again, this is a great way to be able to quickly comment measures in and out. You can also comment out filters if you're using that as part of your troubleshooting. These are all our slicer values up here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is Again, just comment out all but one measure. And you'll see after the, you know, we do real, real fast, simple, uh, single storage engine query, 214 rows, which is how many are, are in the visual. Uh, and, you know, so, and if I were to go ahead and do um, these other ones, these other four, they would all be just as fast to save time. I'm just going to go ahead and uncomment the switch original one. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and keep server time is running. And you'll see this is the slow one. And the reason it's slow, sometimes there's an optimization that runs with the switch behind the scenes and it, it, is, it can be very performant, but other times this happens. And once it's done, you'll see it took an awful long time. Uh, and one of the queries here materialized 2.6 million rows. We've got 12 million in, million in our fact table. Um, and uh, so it's actually, you know, grabbing all of the invoice values. So we have some high cardinality there uh, from, from the sales table, right? So that's huge. So when you materialize these big things, you're basically saying, you know, storage engine saying, hey, I can't, I can't do what you just asked me to do. And when you do these more complex measures that can't be passed to the storage engine, the formula engine says, hey, I've got to do it myself. So bring me back even more data so I can do the processing in my end and do the more complex logic. Okay, so, so how can we avoid this? So now if we go and pull up that measure, and it's the switch original measure, so if I define measure, right? So you can see the logic here. So one thing is this is a lot of complexity to um, just get harvest the value of the slicer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna comment that out, and I'm just gonna say, you know, give me the min value of this um, measure selector measure column. 
okay and so this you know we're locally defining this so this query below will use this locally defined version of this and if we run this let's see if that if that fixes things and it doesn't uh, so now we're going to go ahead and try to fix this so we still materialize in that 2.6 million uh, storage engine query therefore it's still slow uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I, normally I would keep this approach here slightly different functionality um, but I'm gonna uncomment this and let's just go with hey I've got an if and it's slow so let's do what you told me to do before Pat and let's run it with if.eager and let's see if that helps and you can already tell that it doesn't so we've got more work to do so we'll see that 2.6 million uh, storage engine query here as well okay right there so we need to optimize here and a switch is just a, a fancy way to write nested ifs right and so we want to modify this to be uh, nested if dot eager okay so we'll do nested if or if dot eager if it equals this then do total sales otherwise do if dot eager of this and then if that doesn't work if that isn't true and then do nested if dot eager of this last one or this one and if that doesn't work we'll do our last one here and we'll say all right and then we just need to close our parentheses and we've got it there we could format that nicer okay but now we've got if dot eager up here again i would probably use the min approach to harvest that slicer value but we can leave that and now if we've got this nested if dot eager let's see how it does right and you can see it's way faster much less compute much better experience for your report consumers and the biggest um, number of rows we returned is this 214 rows so it was successfully uh, passed the measures down to you know this it knew it needed these um, and passed it down to the storage engine query right um, so you know definitely speeded things up and again you saw how quickly I was able to change that switch into an if dot eager um, and now that we know this is better we could copy this expression back over to our uh, power bi desktop file and replace the uh, dax expression in that measure and things are going to be faster and you know especially with these kinds of visuals often it's like a matrix visual everybody loves those um, but if you know every time someone uses a report if you have a report that has lots of consumers this is just going to add up and again lead to slowness for your consumers but consume that valuable uh, capacity units uh, from your capacity uh, and potentially help uh, you get into a throttling situation so hopefully this is real uh, helpful to you and it's a real quick and easy thing to try to add dot eager to ifs and change your switches to if dot eagers if you've confirmed that those measures are causing your slowness.